The VXT line of truck-mounted vacuum excavators bring a large capacity, high-flow cubic feet per minute blower to the Vermeer truck vacuum excavator product lineup. The nomenclature of these machines describes the blower CFM class. Two examples are the VXT500 truck vac, which is a 5000 CFM class machine. The VXT600 truck vac is a 6000 CFM class machine. Today, I'd like to show you the basic steps to help you operate the VXT. None of this information is intended to replace the operating and maintenance manual. Before running any machine, please read and understand the specific manuals. This also includes, but is not limited to, the truck, engine, and transmission manuals. Machine-specific information can be found on the identification tag. Before operating, be sure all crew members have the appropriate personal protective equipment. This includes, but is not limited to, a hard hat, hearing protection, and wraparound eye protection. If underground utilities may be present, always wear electrically insulated boots and gloves. Refer to the operating and maintenance manual for complete details. The freshwater tank can be filled in two main ways, passenger side fill and overhead fill. When utilizing the overhead fill, make sure there is adequate clearance between the downspout and the truck. Open the air actuated overhead water valve by rotating the handle counterclockwise. This will open the bottom of the funnel, allowing water into the tank. The passenger side method of filling the freshwater tank utilizes a banjo water filter and a two inch water supply fitting on the passenger side of the truck. Attach the supply hose, open the overhead water valve, and supply water to fill the tank. To verify the water level, use the sight glass on the side of the tank. When the tank is at an acceptable level, turn off the supplied water and close the overhead water valve by rotating the handle clockwise to the down position. Before arriving at the job site, contact the local one call system in your area to locate existing underground utilities. Upon arrival, confirm all existing underground utilities have been located and look for evidence of underground placements. Make sure to park the unit on fairly level ground and hard packed soil in a location that is well ventilated and is free from obstructions. Before exiting the cab, set the parking brake. Properly secure the work area and activate the strobe lights if needed. Perform an exterior walk around, confirming the debris tank door latches are engaged, the safety T-bolts are secured, and debris tank valves are closed. Next, confirm all emergency stop buttons are in the normal operating position. There are three emergency stop buttons on the machine. If any are pressed, the engine RPM decreases to low idle, the vacuum relief valve opens, and the blower disengages, but all hydraulic functions will still be active. This unit has a Kenworth T880 chassis, but can also be equipped with a MAC granite chassis. There are different operation procedures between the models so make sure to refer to the operating and maintenance manual. Verify the parking brake is set and start the engine. Check gauges, warning horns, and verify NN is illuminated on the transmission display. If it is not, press the N button on the console. Press and hold the brake pedal while lifting the red safety guard and engaging the PTO-1 rocker switch. The hydraulics should engage in 10 seconds or less and an icon will illuminate, confirming it is on. Yellow lights will flash on the exterior of the machine and a horn will sound. Next, push the PTO2 rocker switch and wait 10 seconds for the transfer case to engage and the icon to appear. If the icon does not illuminate, turn off PTO2, then PTO1, and move the vehicle slightly forward and repeat this process. Push the D button on the console and the display will indicate 4-4. If equipped with the belly pack remote, remove the battery from the charger and insert it into the remote. If using the handheld remote, remove it from the charger. Turn the emergency stop button in the direction of the arrows to disengage. To energize the remote, press the on button and the audible alarm should stop, verifying the remote is connected. For complete instructions, refer to the section on the Scanrico wireless remote system in the operating and maintenance manual. In the event the remote does not connect with the machine, hydraulic functions can be controlled with a valve bank. 
It is located on the passenger side, near the water pump cabinet. Refer to your operating and maintenance manual for specific instructions. Lift the boom up off the transport bracket and place the suction tube in the desired area using the boom controls up, down, extend, retract, and clockwise, counterclockwise functions. Next, verify the manual vacuum breaker is in the closed position. This can be opened during heavy load operations to help reduce the load on the machine. Engage the blower using the remote and allow the blower to warm up for 60 seconds before starting any excavation. When you are ready to dig, close the vacuum breaker and the suction will be applied to the dig tube. If water is needed to aid in the excavation process, open the main water supply valve, which is located inside the cabinet door. Pull an adequate amount of hose from the hose reel to reach the work area. Remove the desired accessories from the side cabinet and attach them to the end of the hose. Energize the water pump. Water flow can be increased or decreased as needed using the remote. Before operation can begin, attach the grounding reel to a ground rod or appropriate grounding attachment. An optional hot water system is available to optimize digging in conditions such as frost. Turn the burner on with the toggle switch and verify the light illuminates. Adjust the thermostat to the desired temperature. Do not exceed the maximum working temperature of the water hose and accessories or damage may occur. After digging operations are complete, start the shutdown process. Open the vacuum brake and idle down the blower using the remote. After two minutes at low idle, turn the blower off. If the hot water system was used, turn it off. Turn the water pump speed control to zero and relieve the pressure on the hose. Clean and remove the accessories from the quick coupler and stow them into their storage locations. Using the electric rewind, feed the hose back into the hose reel and retract the grounding reel. Next, close the main water supply valve and shut the water cabinet door. Lastly, move the boom into the transport position and verify it is setting on the transportation bracket. If freezing weather is expected, antifreeze the system before leaving the job site. Prior to moving the truck, the PTOs will need to be disengaged. Inside the Kenworth cab, press and hold the brake pedal. Press the N button on the console and verify NN is illuminated on the display. Turn PTO2 to the off position. Wait 10 seconds for the transfer case to shift and verify the PTO light goes off. Turn PTO1 to the off position and close the red safety guard. Wait 10 seconds for the hydraulics to disengage and the light on the dash to go out. If the truck is being parked, make sure the parking brake is set. Shut off the engine, remove the keys and exit the cab. When the truck is going to be transported, be mindful of the overall weight and center of gravity. These will change as the spoil tank fills. When unloading the debris tank, the truck should be parked on a level surface that is compact and stable. Properly secure the work area and activate the strobe lights if needed. With the engine running, ensure the parking brake is set. Push PTO1 rocker switch to engage the hydraulics and verify the light illuminates on the dash. Grab the remote and exit the cab. Manually disengage the door safety latches from the rear of the machine. At a safe distance from the truck, turn on the remote. Verifying the area is clear, release the latches on the door by pushing the door lock to the open position. Next, push the door to the open position until the door is fully opened. Engaging the hoist to the up position will raise the tank and allow it to reach its full travel. If the door and tank need to remain in the open position, engage the body prop support and air actuated door locks. When the water and debris are out of the tank, lower the tank, making sure it is fully lowered and resting on the chassis frame rails. Make sure the float ball and door seal are clean and free of debris before closing the door. Using the controls, fully close the door and secure the door latches. 
Now, enter the cab and push PTO1 rocker switch to disengage the hydraulics. It is a best practice to thoroughly clean the machine at the end of each day. If using the truck's wash system, never put the spray nozzle tip closer than 12 inches to painted surfaces or damage may occur. It is also important not to spray barrier agents, such as form oil, directly onto the remote controllers or the control cabinet. These may cause significant corrosion to electrical components. Now you have a basic understanding of how a VXT truck vac operates. Thanks for watching.